Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Gear There and Everywhere. I am joined by my fellow co-hosts Ryan, Dom, Sam, and Michael. This episode, we're going to be taking a deep dive into Helter Skelter. So who wants to take it away first? Coming down fast. That's what our viewers Coming down fast. <laughs> we're not miles above you. No. We're seeing you eye to eye on this. So let's talk about why we're making this episode first. Well, there was a video uh, about a week ago that uh, was making some claims, which is very interesting. And you may have noticed... You can't unhear this, right? And that's the name yeah. of the channel. Yeah. You may have noticed I've got a jazz bass here, and Sam has got a bass six over there. Um, yeah, so the essence of the, of the issue is uh, who played bass on Helter Skelter and what bass did they use. Um who wants to talk about the the standard form? Maybe Sam should talk about what, what has been the standard form of uh, accepted view for this. I thought we were going to start off with like Charles Manson stuff, but uh, okay. Mm. <laughs> um, well, the longstanding history has been that John unusually played lead bass on Halter Skelter on his Fender Bass 6. Uh, Mal Evans in his diary said so. And uh, there's a lot of evidence pointing to that, but uh, this this uh, video, you, you can't unhear this, is that, that what it was, um, mm-hmm. claims that Paul played jazz bass. And there are some good reasons for it. Um, I think I might be the only one of us who is skeptical, but uh, it, there, there's some good evidence there. Yeah, so, I mean, to begin with, the like, just the playing, the reason it was very easy to accept it was a jazz bass and John was because, well, that was the only right-handed bass they had. So if it was going to be You mean the bass six, right? uh, Yeah, yeah, the bass six, I mean. Um, uh, And it's just very sloppy Um, and almost comically sloppy. Like, you'd think with Paul's track record, he probably wouldn't have allowed that kind of bass part on one of his songs. And the basic track was really just... Ringo on drums, uh, Paul singing, uh, Epiphone Casino, whether that was Paul or John's, and then bass. I think George was um, just watching or doing something. There's uh, some story that he was, like, going crazy at the end of the take and, like, had an ashtray, flaming ashtray Mm -hmm. above his head running around. Yeah. Hmm. It's appropriate for a song like that. It's, yeah. I mean, it's horrible. It's horrible bass playing. I mean, let's be real. I'm going to have to disagree sloppy. with all of you here. So I think we're the bone of contention here. Um, there are a few different arguments to be made that it is Paul on the jazz bass. And I think a good place to start for me is that I don't think it is sloppy. Uh, if you listen to the isolated track with Ringo's drumming behind it, it's tight. Like, it's on the beat. Uh, there's an awful lot of skill being demonstrated. I would say it's not even sloppy. It's like intentionally grungy. Yeah. Like it matches the the ethic of the song. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if John had the competency to play that level of bass I, playing, even if it is one of Paul's worst bass lines. I think grungy is the better word for it. I should have rephrased that. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it fits the song is what I'm trying to say. And it's sloppy, but also tight in a way. Much like myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> do we have a um i asked sam about this before but if it is john i think a case needs to be made about john's bass playing and off the top of my head like we saw in get back he's playing bass on long and winding road on let it be i think he may be playing on fixing a hole is that right on the bass six i think that's the first appearance of mm-hmm. the bass six it might have been overdubbed after i that, didn't know the bass yeah. six was around that early it sounds an awful lot like it, yeah. They called it the, uh, they said it was a Fender bass on the studio notes, right. and then it was overdubbed. I don't think it actually could have been this kind of uh, Fender 6, because, like, well, maybe it could have been. Like, this is a later version with the block inlays, and anyway. Um, 
So talking? there's that, and then there are the outtakes of like the little old rock and roll standards during the get back sessions where John's on the bass doing like a walking bass line, which isn't bad. Uh, and then dig it when he's just doing chords. Mm-hmm. So I think a case needs to be made about John's bass playing. Sam, do you want to make that case? <laughs> I mean, I can't say he's an incredible bass player. Um, I will say back in the USSR, which was John and George, there's some interesting rhythmic playing. Um, it's hard to hear, but it's kind of like... Like that kind of stuff, which... I don't know. Hard well, most say, people but... who play the bass six are going to play it more like a guitar, right? Well, actually, Jack Bruce, funnily enough, on the first Cream album, didn't even use a pick. He just did fingers, which I don't even understand how you can do that on. Mm. But he's crazy, so that's... Mm. Yeah. Just such, such an odd thing, though. You know, like the bass six, just an odd thing. But before we go any further, I would say let's say now to our viewers, comment below. What do you think? You know, instead of us waiting to the end, why don't you just comment now and let us all know what you think. Was it the jazz bass? Was it the Fender bass 6? Or was it the Rickenbacker bass? Yeah, are there any other options? That's that's sort of it, right? Unless unless the Hoffner, the Hoffner. came out randomly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hoffner. I don't the think Rosetti the Hoffner can get seven. those kind of trebly sounds out of it. No. Yeah. I couldn't well, really talk when the burner was going off. My hot water was going off a second ago when Michael was talking about how I don't think I agree with him. I don't think it's sloppy at all. I think it's very precise and it was meant to be that way. And I think only Paul could have pulled something like that off. Yeah. We should mention too that Paul, when he plays it live these days, is playing Hoffner bass. He's not playing the yeah. lead guitar part. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's I have a whole list of. Go ahead, Ryan. Sorry, go ahead. that's just something I wanted to bring up later. Was yeah. that it's odd to me how, you know, for the longest time I've th- I've thought Paul played the all the you know main guitar parts on this song, um, and then I was like, well, surely he plays guitar on it live. And I went and looked it up. And like, oh, he doesn't. He plays bass. And also, like for comparison, he plays the guitar when he does Paperback Writer, and Sergeant Pepper when he played it with uh, Bono. Yeah. When he needs to play a guitar part, he'll do he it. Also, and he plays he bass also on Helter played Skelter. It. He played it in the 80s, too, lead guitar on Pepper. Mm. Right. If you remember yeah. in the Get Back World Tour. Yep. But I've never seen a video. I looked before we, we filmed today looking for a video of him playing guitar on a live performance of Helter Skelter. He doesn't do it a single time. Huh. Now, there is the video to, to start maybe at the earliest part of this, um, at the earliest part of their session. Uh, this is... Prior to any, I think, recordings, there's Paul fiddling around on the guitar with, I believe, the Mary Hopkins song, Goodbye, that he wrote. I, I think he does that one, too. And then um, Helter Skelter, he's playing on an acoustic guitar on the on the Martin, I think, um, mm. during the Apple promotional video. And it, Blackbird, it, too. Blackbird's the one, I'm thinking, yeah. Um, and he does that, like, da 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 he, he both sings it and plays it. So that's worth noting that he at least was doing that at some point. Um, and that, that I, that idea came from him. Um, most likely wearing some clogs too. This is true. Um, but yeah, so then there's an initial, well, let's, let's break down maybe some of the claims that the, that the video makes that you can't hear this guy makes. Basically what he says is it's the, the biggest piece of evidence is that if you go to, I believe it's take 17 on, which is one of the takes that got released in the white album re like re-release for the 50th anniversary or whatever. When, um, Giles Martin did it in 2018, uh, they have take 17 in there, which is like, we maybe have take two or something besides that, but we don't have very much of the session audio of this, of this day. And, Paul, there's a part when he's talking to John and he, I think, is it specifically he does like a, da, 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 da. He, yeah, he's trying to it. tell, I believe, John, that when you hit the first note of that fill, play it accentuated. And he demonstrates it on the bass as he's speaking. So it sure sounds like he's the one playing the bass. Yeah. Can we play the clip? Yeah, we I, can, I can pull yeah. that up. That was a pretty convincing piece of evidence. Sam, can you play a bit of the bass line while we're waiting? Sam has an awesome video of this. Very nice, thank you. I believe the part's somewhere around here. It's very yeah. beginning, I yeah, think. Right here. 
and just try to ever get to the bottom of it. I mean, just imagine. Have extra on the first one. Well, that's that's really it, right? That's a jazz yeah. bass. And, I mean, and he's, he's sounds... demonstrating how that particular riff should be accentuated. And if he's demonstrating that, who's playing the bass? The whole conversation wouldn't make sense if someone else is playing that. Like he's showing someone else how to play the riff. Well, if John was starting off on guitar, Paul would have to actually be singing as the guitar is playing before the bass even comes in. So they'd have to really be in sync, John and Paul for the intro because it would be like what you're saying john guitar paul vocals only they'd have to really be in time with each other oh yeah no that's 100 percent paul hitting that demonstrating what needs to be done and that bass sound you hear is exactly what you hear on the record just a little bit less of a you know not as blah, 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 blah. real quick as a sound comparison can we can sam and i each just play those those bits just so people have an idea what that sounds like on the two different ones I mean, it's obviously going to sound pretty similar, but I feel like that's worthwhile. Sam, do you want to take a crack at just Wh- that? Which pickups little... do you want to hear? Uh, well, that's a question. What do you think? Do um, I'm still convinced it's if it were the bass six, it'd be the bridge and or uh, yeah, bridge and middle pickups. Yeah, I did. I think uh, neck and middle for my cover, but um. <laughs> What happens if you on? like really aggressively pick to like mm-hmm. pretend you're going to destroy the guitar? Let me let me try the the neck and middle. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 that's it. That's the sound. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think that's it how it's played. Like it. Yeah. it sounds closer. All right, let me let me take a crack at it. can't hear anything that was so close i I heard that perfectly ryan (laughs) let me let me just dead on (laughs) well i'm Uh, sure our viewers will hear (laughs) it right you could also play ryan this we all sent clips to a group email you could just play the clip because i have the rickenbacker there too do you want me to play that we can hear your bass if we do okay it's very sloppy has that grunt Right. And I am playing through a Fender Rumble 15, so it's a really small amp, so it's not going to get too growly. Mm. <laughs> Let's do that this time. You know, and again, same thing if you went more aggressive, did a few things differently, I bet you. Yeah. Right. Paul is really playing the hell out of that bass. You mean John? <laughs> <laughs> no, Ringo, I'm sorry. Ringo is playing the hell out of that bass. <laughs> yeah, so that gives you a little um, bit of a comparison for us. Now, there are notable differences on our instruments versus the ones they would have had. Right. Which both of them had these chrome covers. Um, the well, jazz. Not the bass six, but it had what? a mute thing. The bass six had the, the, it had chrome the tail cover over the bridge. On the bridge, yeah. Yeah. So oh, Dom, D- Dom was arguing that the the bridge pickup would have been altered slightly maybe because the magnets interfering with the chrome or something. Well, what I was, what I was saying, and this applies to the jazz bass at that point, you know, the jazz basses came stock with the, with that metal cover over the, uh, what was it? The, well, the bridge pickup and the yeah, middle both pickup. pickups, mm-hmm. both pickups that affects the way the magnets interact with the strings. I think it changes the sound. It makes it brighter. I think, it's been a it's been a minute since I've done my digging on this, but it does change the way that it sounds. Yeah, we know that Paul had chrome covers on both the the pickups and the bridge, which would have had mutes foam mute strips in the chrome cover on the bridge. So that would, you know, make it even more plunky, dead sounding, um, like you well, got on Glass Onion. And because of this, Paul, you brought this up. Where was Paul picking if he was playing bass on this? Like we're on the base, we're physically on the base. We're physically on the base, yeah. I thought he he would have been doing it, uh, like here, like or like close. I can't see this. And there's photos of him playing it yeah. up there like that. I think it, yeah, he was playing like he had his arm like this because he has it on his leg here, 
I think he's usually playing like pretty close to the fretboard, right? Do I you want me to pull up, so. pull up some photos? Yeah. Because I was, was looking a... at these earlier today. Righty base, wasn't it? He didn't have the lefty base. No, he had, he had the lefty no, one. No, it was a lefty base. Yeah. Well, in yeah, that I case, think for the we folks who might be Beatles gear fans, but still kind of amateurs like me, can we do a brief history of the jazz yeah. base? Do we know when it was bought and when it starts showing up in Let's pictures? See. Was it just on the white album Search. and later? It was Hang bought, on. I believe, right. How the heck do I see this? Sometime <laughs> during the white album. There we go. That's when we first see it. Okay. But I don't know where it was bought from. And then it shows up not on the Get Back sessions, but it does on Abbey Road. Mm-hmm. And at some point, a right-handed jazz bass was bought, too, because we see George with one in the Abbey Road sessions, right? I think that may have been included in the care package that Fender sent over with all their, mm-hmm. you know, twin reverb amps and the all that stuff. See, I can't remember which day that... Has there is a folder that's just a white album, the whole sessions, I think, okay. on that Beatles recording page. I don't even know how you searched 1968. That just boggled my mind right there, what you just did. It's Control, Control F. F. Yeah. yeah. It'll change your life. You said there's a there's a white album folder in here? There is. Okay. Keep, keep all of this in. <laughs> okay. There it is. Yeah. There are no photos during any Helter Skelter session, right? No. Which would really help. So this is all just guesswork on our part. So there's one. Oh, that is a lefty. Yeah. And he's pretty And he's close, picking it right I around the say. middle. Yeah. He's definitely way past the, the cover. Yeah, um, that cover's way back there. Because, like, yeah, I don't know if you can see Michael, but the cover is, like, he's resting his arm or his hand, the palm of his hand, on the second cover. Just like so, the Rick. Yeah. Mm. Can right. we see what kind of strings those are too? Can we zoom in on the strings? Uh. <laughs> actually, that might be a good idea. There, there's Paul probably a better expertise. There's got to be a better photo in here. But Paul, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. All right, let me see if there's a better photo. Oh, come on. There's more. There's photos. another one later on for um, long, long, long sessions. If you scroll down. Why is this? Let me let me do a little bit of detective the wrong work here. Hold on a minute. I'm confused. So go to October f- like something. Uh oh I see. Here we go. There's another one. Yeah, Wait, go back up. up. Go back up. Where's that one there? More. No. More. Yeah. Right there. So, Paul's on the piano with it. Too tough to tell. That's know. the chrome cover that we were talking yeah. about. Um, well, there's more photos. We'll find one. Uh, there's this one. The light might be easier to tell. No. 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 <laughs> there's there's another one. I'm. But he is picking of. past that yeah. other cover. Yeah. That other Which cover, Which makes yeah. sense because you have a pretty narrow place to pick otherwise. Oh, maybe this one. No. Now there's some of him and George. If you keep going, there's a, a little bit down. There's one of him like sitting with George on the floor. Yeah, that one or something. Yeah, yeah both of those back to back. There we go. Mm-hmm. Nah. We can Can't see tell. his where his knobs are pointing. <laughs> he has a tone rolled off a little bit. Uh. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, go to that one. Yeah. There is a good one, yeah. Not using a pick. Mm. That's weird. I mean, I don't know. They are really bright to me, every single picture. And that but, means what? I mean, Rounds. Yeah, but at the same time, too, though, that could have been maybe, you know, Fender's type of a flat wound or something like that that was a little bit brighter on bases. You know, like, I don't know. Could have been a I, new, new base. You know, I don't know. I am pretty sure they came stock with flats. I would just think like the so, Ricks yeah. did. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Just for sake of argument, since we're here, I want to see. I just feel like a lot of bases at the time all came flat wounds. 
It makes Same, sense. What day is uh, Maxwell? Oh, it's this one. Oh, George's God, jazz. I just want to see if we can tell what George nice. is. And that is the coolest Beatles photo of all time. <laughs> he looks so <laughs> see, damn cool. That looks it goes like flat wounds to It me. does. That, yeah, you're just, right. Because that of looks the more like flat. That looks There's different than Paul's. No cover. Yeah, no uh, cover pickups. And on the, the second pickup. Rest. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So and what happens if... Using a pick. Yeah, I would say that looks like flats and Paul's looks more like rounds. Wait, what were you saying, Paul? No, I was just going to say, I mean, I didn't, I kind of forgot that George even only, again, everybody, excuse me, I don't really know anything past Sergeant Pepper. I get a little confused. I, I'm not that familiar with the stuff, but I honestly didn't really know George had that thing. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, there's a possibility that possibly Paul or George could have also done. Well, he didn't have base. it yet. He didn't oh, get it until Abbey Road, yeah. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> He only used it for like that one day. Get out of here. No, he yeah. plays it on Golden Slumbers and Does carry he? that weight. Yeah. I thought it was the base six. Yeah, it was a that's a whole ones. that's a whole nother you can see, of worms. You yeah. see the red it's the next the episode. Yeah. Yeah, right. You mm -hmm. see the threaded wrap. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Those are flat rounds. Flat flat rounds. Nice. <laughs> so these are flats? Well, on George's. Okay. I don't know oh. if we have base six photos from sixty eight. Well we have Hey Jude, the the music video. Yeah. I think that's the first appearance of it. Can we see Paul's headstock at all? Maybe oh, we yeah. can try to find one. Um Oh yeah. If we go back down, there was a um jazz based photos of Paul with the headstock. Oh, can where? do some sleuthing. I feel like we need like a jingle for every time we talk about strings. It's like <laughs> I don't know strings. which photo you're talking about. <laughs> uh go back all the way down. I, I am all the way down. Oh. I think I had dream. I left the, the thing. ones I wasn't... you had before. Yeah. There you go. Can we leave this in? Let's <laughs> um, figure it out. People like photos. Shana. Dreams. Okay. Tell me when to stop here. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It's keep a scary photo. Going. <laughs> yeah, that one? Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, nice. It's a bit blurry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of focus there. Uh, Some of these see, this ones. One, I have it, yeah. There was another one. Hold on. Uh, go up and to the left. This see that one? one? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Still too blurry. What about the one above it? You can kind of see the string ends on the headstock. Zoom in a bit. It's it's not enough. Yeah. Can you? They have the silks. So you can see it. I, I have no clue what you're either. seeing. <laughs> or maybe it's the shadows. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, know, I don't think there's tough. enough there. I think if you're going to see it, it's this. The, well, maybe not even that one. But he doesn't. Yeah, I don't think there's. I think that's it. Well, regardless. He, um, mostly, uh, I mean. I guess we should also point out we shouldn't be too facile to rule out the Rickenbacker as an option. Yeah, yeah like, because I think it's the jazz bass too, but it's there in the pictures too. Cover yep. the bases, I guess. Um, we, Ryan touched on this briefly. So there was a, a slow version of Helter Skelter from July or something like that. And it's possible that. Paul did play guitar on that one, but not the album one. There's some speculation. And then there was like Mal's diaries where he said John unusually played bass on Helter Skelter, but Ryan was pointing out it could be referring to the first version. Yeah, so the I was I was glad that the um you can't hear this video uh elaborated on that. And because I when I went in to watch that I was very skeptical. Um, because of the Mal diary entry or whatever, where he said John unusually plays bass on this. And that didn't really fit with the rest of it. And that quote is taken from the Beatles monthly book. And that book, I believe, was for... I think it came out maybe before that the song was recorded. Or it he was he was able to attribute that quote to being before the September session where the song was recorded as we know it. And he talked to Kenneth Womack about who's, who has access to, to uh, Mal's diaries. And Mal said that there was no mention of it after that first session 
So he he mentioned it about the first session, and he doesn't say anything about John playing bass later on. So it seems like, at the very least, that initial quote that everyone quotes with Mal Evans saying John played bass was about the first session. I can't even remember the bass line in that first yeah, slow let's, version. Let's it's just it. a, like a thudding like whole note, I think. There's Which nothing complicated about it. Is more in line with John's playing, it seems. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Take two. Really good. Doesn't really sound like that thuddy bass that we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, oh, yeah, you can tell it's John there because. Paul's the only one with a vocal mic there, and I don't. You guys don't have this separated separated in stereo, but people in the audience will hear it. Um, you can hear on the left side. So on the right side, the guitar comes through electric, and on the left side, it comes through acoustic because it's bleed in the vocal mic. So Paul's so vocal Paul mic on guitar. is definitely playing guitar here. So that's how you know it's John on bass here. I'll play that again. Once. You can hear it throughout the whole song. It sounds like. Yeah, that's that's very well, obvious. The vocal mic is picking up the acoustic qualities of the mm -hmm. guitar. Yeah, which in this case would probably be the casino. Yeah, which is pretty mm -hmm. loud vocal, uh, like uh, acoustically. Absolutely. Acoustically, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that doesn't necessarily rule out that John played bass on the no. later version, but it is interesting because Mal says right. Yeah, so John plays bass. It explains Mal's quote, and they can be consistent with each other. John did play bass at one point, mm. but we don't know exactly who played it on the release version. So did one you... of the... Oh, what were you going to say? No, no. I was going to say, could we play the um, You're So Square outtake? Yeah. Now, this um, I'm not familiar with. What is this? Yeah, Sam, can you explain this? Okay, me? so on the White Album box set, um, right before the Helter Skelter outtake, the fast mm. one... Uh, that we were just listening to. There's this. It was just a jam, and it, this is the same lineup as the album version, etc. So you can kind of hear, you know, what they're doing on the instruments, but in a different style. So it might tell us who is playing bass or guitar. So is this the same session as the Helter Skelter? This is like between takes, right? It's like right before the outtake that we hear. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> such a cool bass sound i mean they should have stuck with it that just sounds so rock and roll to me it's like led like, zeppelin almost yeah and you hear at the end right when they that doom that last thud it's that like chord on the bass line. and it sounds just like what you hear on helter skelter the same tone that's paul definitely on bass i don't think that part is outside of john's ability as a bass player but it's it's close i mean we definitely haven't heard any john play anything like that before on like get back you do okay. see john is on base six and they're playing some oldies and like I blue think suede was, shoes um, yeah. yeah blue suede shoes he does he does stuff right yeah so it's not out of his ability um exactly yeah and also there's that like lick on the guitar that could be either i i don't know one way or the other but it's just interesting the choices they're making on the outtake so i think that clip did here? well that clip demonstrated it was useful a point I wanted to make, which is as sloppy or um, grungy as the part sounds, it is possible to sing it while you play it. Like, I think that was one of the arguments for John is uh, it's a complex part. It's rock and roll. And, you know, it's so bizarre and interesting. You can't sing while you do it. Mm -hmm. I think that clip is a counter argument. Paul is absolutely singing there. And that part, you know, re it requires skill and dexterity. 
Well, um, I mean, I you'd John see him. Has on the bass. Didn't he? Like, he was playing the Nowhere Man bass part live while singing that harmony. Like, right. Yeah. Paul could sing and play bass to no end. And um, that little run, the beetle, deedle, deedle, dee, he's not singing during that part. Like, that's probably the most difficult thing to play and sing. And he's not singing there. Which, I which will say, part are you talking I, about? Beetle, deedle, deedle, dee. That oh. narrows oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you couldn't tell? <laughs> the little, little. I, I thought you might have been talking about Nowhere Man. I didn't know where it was either. <laughs> I, I say sang though, it perfectly. <laughs> at the end, though, when he's not singing, there's this bass part that's super sloppy. Like, they, there's a breakdown, and then there's like. Ooh. Like, it's just nonsense at the end. But, you know, I could also see Paul just messing around. Yeah. The thing that. I found interesting in retrospect because I didn't know how the guitars were broken up on the original recording. So Sam's video demonstrates this really well um, that whoever's playing the basic track, we, we know George isn't playing either of these parts. Um, uh, the basic track guitar is basically just like, you know, distorted noise on like one or two chords the whole time. And he doesn't play any riffs or anything. No, right. but what's interesting about the basic track guitar is that sharp E string wobble thing. Mm -hmm. The way that I did it was I put a super light gauge string on the low E, and when I hit it hard, it went like wow each time you really hit the, mm. the E. I don't know if that's something they did intentionally or if they had light gauge strings on, but it is interesting about the basic track. Yeah. Um, and then the overdub guitar part, which I don't know if we know which if that was on that day or the day after, um, but that the overdub part is the one that has the like uh, the do -do 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 -do. that that's where the guitar on the overdub is, and that's obviously also in the bass part. So it started to make more sense to me, thinking like, okay, well, if my issue with uh, with the John playing the bass or playing the guitar was that. Uh, the bass was sloppy and the guitar was not. I was thinking like, oh, well, the guitar is actually split into two pieces. And so it would kind of make sense if John's playing the bit that's just distorted chords and then Paul plays the bass part that has the da -da 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 -da. and then he also plays the guitar part on an overdub that does the same riff. So that kind of made sense to me that Paul would play both of those things because he also is seen playing it on the acoustic guitar a month or so earlier. Yeah, but like, that's an easy riff. He could have just told George or John how to do it too. That's even yeah. something John could do. That's fair. But if so, if Paul's on bass, George is on lead guitar, and there's one guitar in the basic track, or is that John? So the like, do well, know? it's kind of hard because certain it doesn't seem to be like documented terribly well. Like the Beatles ebooks website, he says that George was on the basic track as well. Sam just said earlier that he thinks George was, you know, running around the studio doing whatever during the basic I don't track. Think he was there. I it think doesn't, he was just goofing off. So yeah, it doesn't it make any sense John for him. Doing, okay, but that, so that opening riff is on the basic track, mm -hmm. and then it's just like open E chord, open G chord. Yeah. So do we, I guess the basic question is, do we think John's capable of the opening riff? I Absolutely mean, is. Yeah. The, I think the, he totally the guy is. in the video says it's similar to Revolution, which I think makes sense too. Like yeah. vaguely similar. It's easy enough. It's literally just moving one finger down each fret. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not that hard. He was no idiot. Yeah. No. Is it worth talking about the um, the one bit behind the bridge strumming? Let me get yes, my cassette. Actually, no. So, I always bring up Beatles to a T. To me, that's like, you know. That's what I grew up with, so that's what I'm like familiar with. He Rod Taylor does it as an E6 chord. He just strums an E chord, which Are you doesn't about the very last chord of the whole thing. Well, before before the slide, right during the slide bit, there's that crazy thing going oh. on, which I think is him behind the bridge. Yeah, but it's been done before, you know. Normally, not like behind the bridge. It's been done. Like that, yeah. I don't know. Wh I don't know why he did it like that. Rob Taylor did. I don't know, but well, so the I question think it was behind the bridge. The question, presuming it is behind the bridge, the question that Sam had was, 
uh, obviously, if Paul's playing the casino, he's playing the one that he has with a Bigsby uh, mounted mm. on it. And John's did not have a Bigsby mounted on it. And so John was playing the intro and doing all the, his work. He was still on it, and then Paul was just doing the lead and doing some of that other stuff, I feel like. Well, but that part's not on the lead. That's on the basic track. Which part? The behind the bridge strummer. Can we hear it? This part. Can we yeah. hear it on the original track? Yeah. I just yeah. so we can have a frame of reference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that right yeah. here? That's right when they come back in. That. Right there. Yeah. That thing. I don't know what the hell that is. That well, that's what Sam was just doing. It so, sounds like that to me. I did my little loud thing. Uh, how do I back it? Do you want me this? to pull up Sam's cover real quick? Because so, obviously can... we're hearing it through your vocal mic and it sounds more acoustic right now. Paul, what'd you do? I sent it in an email. <laughs> Paul did oh. it with his casino, which has a, a big yeah. speed, so it's interesting to hear I, that. I don't well, have a big speed. I have a... Oh, you don't? No, no, that was just through uh, the regular. Uh, uh, well, the whole no, it was just through, through a conqueror, so you could yeah, hear what the hell a freaking conqueror sounded like. Oh, uh, okay. No, I assume no, my, my playing's horrible. <laughs> Yeah. That, that sounds, sounds right. exactly like it. That's it. Well, That's the, behind the bridge, right, Paul? Yeah. And that Sam did the same closer. thing, just so we can show. We can show. What Don't it mind looks you like. plugging me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think we wanted to know. So. Michael, your your Bigsby has a, or your your casino. Has a Bigsby. My Bigsby, Bigsby has a casino. casino. Yeah, your Bigsby has a Bigsby. It's a big guitar family we have here. Sam's Bigsby does not have a casino yet. It's sitting off to the side. Do you have it there? Like, I mean, just yeah. Hold on, hold on. Or Tom, you have a. He's, he's got a Bigsby. He's only got a Bigsby. I have a casino on my Bigsby. Yes. It's also sitting in its case in another room. I think we just want to know generally: know. does it sound remotely similar? Or does it sound completely different if you have a Bigsby? Play an E7 chord and... <laughs> no. <laughs> that ain't it. That ain't it, man. It's that should be the intro, moment though. of my YouTube life. <laughs> well, can, you, can you show the guitar just on the screen? Like, hold it up? Christ. I just want to see how long the strings are there compared You're to... You're just like, fucking say, with me at this point. Yeah, here you go. So the string distance to that part is a lit a bit shorter, right? From the oh, bridge. Yeah. Very much so, yeah. Can you that's, see? That's interesting. <laughs> well, I would like in my left ear right now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> what would you say? Oh, you're, you're only in our left, ear. our left ear. Oh shit, really? It's because you have the sound for musicians on or whatever. Oh. So I haven't gone deaf yet. That is pretty interesting actually. <laughs> I I think that's pretty good evidence. I mean, it's it's not complete, but it does sound a little bit different. <laughs> Paul's freaking dying over here. <laughs> that sound, I just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it sounds like some kind of Chinese, like, freaking ancient, like... <laughs> Woo. And it didn't make you laugh, Paul. Here, wait, sorry to do this, but it looks like Paul's has a bit more room oh, yeah. than so, Michael's. His was possibly a summer imported Bigsby. Um. <laughs> so there is enough room here. Wait, sh- show it again, Michael. Yeah, it's a lot different <laughs> than Paul's. Actually, that's interesting. <laughs> Paul's losing it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just tired. That's probably what it is. <laughs> uh, Paul's got to get up in like six hours. Two what hours. about yours? <sighs> oh, Dom, yours is in a case. I was gonna. Ask Do you want you me it. to go grab it? I can grab it. Give me a couple minutes. You have to I- make the same face I did, though. It's the only condition. There you go. So the distance is about the same, but looks pretty again, tiny to me. It's average. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. This is gonna be our most viewed episode. It looks pretty tiny to me. Tight gaps. I'll tell you. This is a real low point for this podcast. 
Coming down yeah, fast. It's usually, it's usually <laughs> pretty right, serious and deadpan, all right? No, it's no, not. Saying, no. <laughs> no, this not is going to the highlight reel. <laughs> Anyways, though, I would have to say, though, all right, so what does it mean, though, whoever's doing it is on the basic track? What does that mean? So basically, is that, that something that John is, or Paul would do, I guess? Well, who is more likely to have done track. something that quirky? Uh, basically, meaning when I, when I say it's on the basic track, what I mean is that the take that got used, the first take that was used and then overdubbed onto that take which is i believe take 21 um that take has that part on it uh and it's not an overdub guitar that has that so that part was recorded at the same time the bass part was recorded so whoever's doing that was not the one playing bass there's our answers we just answered the whole damn show you should hear. Well, all right guys thanks for watching the show yeah. can we conclude <laughs> that it was more likely that John did that thing. I don't think yeah. that's something quirky that anybody. Well, absolutely. Would do. You have Why? more space between the the bridge. Well, like, well, had see, well, just as much space though. Didn't you yeah, that's back the, the issue. Is that our Bigsby's are not the same as what Paul's was. But like. here's the here's no. the problem though. All right, I I mean mine's. I don't know how it came out to everybody. You guys said it sounded pretty damn close. Now it would make sense. John would be through the conqueror most likely, and. Um, he would have had that little bit of distortion on it. And if you hear when he's rattling it through, you, it echoes more. That tail, the Bigsby is a solid piece. So mm. it's not it's not vibrating true. as much. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. That floating little tail piece is just helping that vibration, and that's what's giving you that loud echo. And that's why that's why Dom's and um Michael sound the same, like a little Chinese toy, because it uh it, it's tight there. <laughs> You're saying it doesn't echo through the body. It's just on that part there. Yeah, it's solid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <sighs> Dom? Uh, all right. Hold on. My bad. Hold on a minute. Uh. Hold on. I want to get it on mine, but it's just a green screen. It's a oh, green screen? One right behind you. Come on, oh, I say I grab mines, but it's just a green screen. <laughs> Is that true? Oh. <laughs> no, no, really no, 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 no. <laughs> Could have fooled me. <laughs> oh, for good do it. Here we go. Paul, we can't hear yours. No, still? No, no. I can't. Oh, wow. But, again, the... There it is. But, yeah, the, the point is, I don't think Paul would have been able to do it. No. On that. So he had to have been playing bass. I don't know. It's I mean, I, I'll say. pull up. We don't have a, a big speed one that has the same distance. But yeah. let me, can we pull up pull the picture again of Paul's yeah. casino? Who had that? Someone Sam, had that. Yeah, yeah. Sam. Yeah, I would say either way, it's not a definitive thing, but it points toward it being John, I believe. That is way different. What the That heck? is a bit more space. Yeah. Why do you think that yeah. is? I wonder why that you said it was because it's a... It, who made it? Different possibly. type of Bigsby, I think. Yeah, the Bigsby looks smaller than mine. It's possibly a Selmer imported Bigsby. Hmm. Like some people say that, like Lennon's Bigsby on his uh, on his Rick was Selmer. Yeah. Pull up the picture again. One sec. It's it's weird because it's like, where does that space go? Yeah, our bridges are right near the bottom pickups. Yeah, I don't know. He has more space. I think his his Bigsby might be smaller. It's a different type of Bigsby. I think ours are the B7, and his looks yeah. like a weird version. Um, but anyways, just something to think about. I we guess. should get more into other guitars because, like, we have the basic track one. We've kind of beaten a dead horse on that one. The um, there's two overdub ones going. I think that's Split either left and right. That's either the SG or Lucy. That part? Hmm. The, yeah, the... Da, 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 da. See, I thought that that was... Because Paul's playing that on the acoustic, he's going to want to just overdub that. So I am I was pretty confident that it's Paul playing the casino on the overdub, regardless of who's playing on the basic track. That's what I thought, too, it's uh, at least on my cover, because then the solo is probably George going... Yeah. Do we have any clips of the guitar parts so we can listen to them? Oh, you know what? I think I have um, 
something about that. So, um, yeah. So he does that. And on that low E, there's this, uh, it sounds like a big speed because it goes up in pitch, almost like. Um, which would kind of imply that it's something with a whammy bar. He could have just been hitting the string super hard. Possibly. Well, you said but the... it's it's a lot after that note. Like like hey, I'm doing. The, Let me, you want me to just play it again? Yeah, play can we again? hear it again? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even notice that. I didn't notice it. You guys got good ears. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. There it is. Yeah. That's interesting. So Sam, you got that just from putting your finger behind the nut, right? Yeah. <laughs> you do a behind the nut bend, Michael. <laughs> behind the what? Uh, behind the nut bend. I didn't oh, even know I was like, doing um, that. Like like Jimmy Page. Like uh Clarence White. That's a B bender. Yeah, he was doing behind the nut bending before that he had the B bender. <laughs> That's why they made one. Uh, this is our dirtiest uh, GTE of all time. Well, it's, um, the, it's the dirtiest Beatles song of all time, so it makes sense. Right. Fitting. So that kind of bending, though, sounds like a Paul uh, interest. Yeah, that that sounds more like a big speed right? going up and down, yeah. yeah. And so he could have overdubbed that with his casino. Yeah. I, I Do we all agree that that's, that part's the casino? Double tracked? Yeah. It's hard to tell. It could I mean, be the SG. What if it's both? I mean, Both they the sound too. The it sounds too similar in tone. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think they would have done that. But they played it in unison. It does um, sound thick. Yeah. Do you want me to play yeah. some of George's parts? Yeah. Let's see, so after that. Yeah, that's a George all the way. No doubt. So that guitar <laughs> that you just played, the solo, is definitely, we can all agree, bending, right? It's, right. Because there Sounds was some a lot like a about, fretless. I don't know, man. Really? I don't yeah. think you can do that kind of stuff on a fretless. That, you can. The bending stuff and the that stuff? Sure. Hmm. You ever played a fretless? It's weird. I have. I I didn't think because it sounds like bending to me sounds like you're starting from one note Definitive and then going pitch, up. Yeah. See, <clears throat> whereas fretless is kind of more like a slide sound. Yeah, I'm not buying this fretless thing. Get he could have been get bending on my face. fretless. <laughs> I'm not buying it. I don't know. I, I think maybe they had it and they thought it was cool. Tried it from a friend, but they didn't use it. I don't well, know, there's I'm not so there's it. part later on that is definitely slide or fretless. So the solo is not like that, but later on the same guitar for sure. Is doing that kind of. Uh, I have a slide here. One George was a great slide player. That whole thing. Can we hear that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've never heard that before. It's during the crazy breakdown stuff. <laughs> Ooh, that's SG. And he's using the whammy on the SG. Ooh! Wait. You think? No, it sounds not. fretless a, to me. It's a, it's a slide at the very least, or 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 fretless, but definitely not. Because you hear the last one goes down quite a bit. Because all the way down. Yeah, it sounds metallic, like yeah. Yeah, play, yeah, yeah, you're play right. it one more time. Yeah. yeah, there's kind of some fret noise towards the end, which wouldn't uh-huh. exist on a fretless guitar. <laughs> Never mind. I think it's just scraping the neck. I don't think it's fret noise. But it's like, a why would a why would a fretless have that? Glassy, uh, like contact, yeah. why like hard like surface contact sign. It sounds why like couldn't, a slide. But why couldn't you also be sliding down and also using the Bigsby at the same time to go down? Mm. No, that sounds like you. It would just not be even, wouldn't it? You could. Well, I mean, you know, that. slowly, just a slight amount of pressure, and as you're going down at that last end, because each thing, you know, he's bending down. 
Each one of those is a bend down, except the last just few notes are the the slide. You know. So, well, what, know. why would it be a bend down if it's either way? It, it wouldn't because it's either a slide, so it's not bending at all, or he's doing the fretless, where he also wouldn't be bending at those all. Those are bends, those. though. Those are one hundred percent bends. When he no, starts, I think bends. those are bends. Let's play that. There's bends, bends earlier. There's bends he's, earlier he's, on. He's going like that. He's you know he's bending no. up, hitting it, and then coming down off of that. There's no way. Sam, what did you do on your cover? Did yeah, you, hit you mind part? playing it, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll just play <laughs> Sam's cover. <laughs> just there's Sam's there's no way. Channel, just play my video. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now play the Beatle. Where'd you get those pants? J. J. Crew, Banana Republic? Uh, the striped ones? The Harrison ones? Oh, oh, I think he meant those <laughs> pants. Play the Beatle one, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's more sliding oh, here, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it does sound like what Sam was doing with the bottleneck. I think that bit, especially at the end there, where he's on the lower frets, um, that doesn't seem to me like it could be a fretless. But There's I, I have another part after that that goes like... Yeah. Yeah, I can... That's a slide. Yeah. George was a slide player. Why? Mm. Yeah. It's just kind of strange to play a whole guitar part in a song and then pick up a slide towards the end. Yeah, it matches what Sam did definitely. Yeah, I would. I, I would vote like for. Slide. I yeah, would vote I for prefer. slide for that just yep. for that string noise. Yep. Yep. One hundred percent. It would be far smoother on a fretless. Mm -hmm. If you're holding down the notes, you wouldn't hear any of that noise. That slide yeah. noise for sure. Right. Oh, well, yeah. we solved the guitar parts, at least. <laughs> All right, now slide. the Malevin's trumpet part. <coughs> Should we play that? It's on here. Mal Evans on trumpet. Oh, wait, doesn't I it think say it was John, actually. It was, doesn't <laughs> it say... Was. It doesn't Mark Lewis's book say John on saxophone and Mal oh, Evans yeah. on trumpet? Paul was uh, the trumpet player originally, let's right? Let's see, where is this? You're right. <laughs> Why did they put that on there? So, since okay, let me just make this one note. Since I was growing up and I've always listened to that song every so often, I always thought John said that. Blister on my finger thing. Listening oh, really? to it again right there, I kind of think that sounds like John to me a little bit. I know you guys it's, probably disagree and hate me, well, but I think that's, that's John. It's yeah. known fact that it's Ringo. I know, he's but playing it sounds drums. like John yeah, he's, to me. He's got though. blisters from the drumsticks. Yeah, but how? He doesn't. He's not doing anything out of the normal. He's doing. He's just playing hard. You played, you ever was, played yeah. drums? I yeah, mean, played, he was smashing those things John for twenty the, something uh, minutes behind live. Behind the nut bend, you know, blisters from doing all the behind the nut stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, he would drum live for twenty something minutes straight, ball as hard as he could because nobody could hear him. I mean, how he had blisters on his while. fingers just playing helter skelter. No, it's because they they That's said that it was the last take that they used. And they had done something like 30 takes, so like the mm -hmm. last take is the one you hear on the album, and that's apparently why Ringo was so tired, because they had been doing this hard rock song for 30 takes all night. Why would he have blisters on his fingers, though? He, he holds the drumsticks like this, the, he would have it right sticks. into here, right? I mean, no? he hadn't been finger. playing live in a while. Right in here, though. That's I hand. usually get them on my finger like tips, because... I mean, I'm a bad drummer, but I've bled before yeah. because of that. Honestly, like especially when you're doing that high. Sorry for the unfortunate hand gesture. When you're doing the Ringo hi hat thing, I get blisters on this part of my hand too because the drumstick, the bottom of it, is rubbing up against this part I mean, of your hand. It's abrasive. Yeah, but, but that's what yeah. your daily job is, though. You're a guitar player, just like with these guys. Well, that's your daily. He might job. have had calluses from all the live playing, but again, this is three years after, two years after their last tour. So. Yeah. 
I'm still not buying this, Ringo. It's <laughs> Ringo. It's gotta be. It's Ringo. Not buying it. Is it Stick uh... to strings, Paul. It's Ringo. I'm not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like uh, Joe. Get out. Is it Bernard Purdy? <laughs> it was actually <laughs> Yoko. <laughs> well, I would say that about anything else you guys want to talk about. I think yeah, it's I mean, time to reach some conclusions here. Yeah, about so who's playing what? What have we learned, class? I would say that we. I would say fairly definitively can say that the fretless is not there because it sounds yeah. too much like a slide. Yeah, I would agree. Um, mm-hmm. And then for the guitar, basic guitar slash bass, I'd say the evidence would definitely lean toward Paul playing the bass and John playing the basic track guitar. Like, even if only for that that thing. Um, well, the but, intro and everything else, I mean, there was still a lot he contributed, but you could definitely hear there was two guitars overlaid, of course. And I think Paul was just playing the backup one. And there really isn't a good explanation for why Paul doesn't play the guitar live, other than that. Yeah. It's difficulty? I don't know. It's but not it's not. It's just, like, yeah. if he was playing that, he'd be playing the basic track, right? Yeah. Because he, he'd just be doing that. So what is if it's if it's just him on bass then, and it's just George and John on guitar? It could be. I think. I think. Well, the thing we did say is there's definitely a big speed on the overdubbed guitar doing the the that that guitar string. Yeah, definitely has a big speed on it there. And John's did not. George wasn't really using the casino around now. He was using the Les Paul and the SG. It doesn't. It sounds more like a casino. Like the the stuff that's attributed to George sounds a little bit more um, like clean and focused, I guess. Like just the tone of it. The the other stuff sounds more like a casino. So I don't know. My my vote. I guess we should just go through and say what everyone is thinking at the moment. My vote would be Paul and jazz bass now, which you know me two weeks ago would have hated to hear that, but. I would say Paul on jazz bass now, due to the tone and just the, all this other stuff we mentioned. John on the basic track on his casino. George on either the SG or the Les Paul. I don't really have a fight there. Um, on that one set of overdubs. And then Paul on the the, the double-tracked casino overdubs. The And George playing slide, of course. So, I don't know. Does anyone fully agree with all of that? I, Paul, I'll say ditto, for sure. Yeah, I'd say about the same, yeah. Except yeah. that Paul did play slide on Drive My Car. Okay, yeah. That's true. He did. That's very true. I'm going to be the one to still say John was on Fender Base 6. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm that guy. I'm that guy in the podcast who's the, the oddball one. You're not that Make guy, the case. No. Make your final summation. No pressure. Okay. 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 Okay, Mike. Um, I'll say that, first of all, Mal said that, uh, I know that Ryan was saying that it's like referring to the other session, but Mark Lewison's book, White Album Booklet, and Mal all said John played bass. I think that's pretty compelling. In my mind, I've always seen Paul singing and playing guitar like this, as opposed to singing and doing this i know that's not really much of a reason but it just makes sense to me but um although i guess live he he does do wait you guys make a i'm confused what your point is with that i've just always pictured like it's easier to sing when you're strumming chords as opposed to the but the guitar the guitar is also doing that though it's doing like well not during the not after i guess yeah in the the verses yeah. yeah but um and i don't know having a bass six and just playing on it i just i think the basics and the jazz bass do sound very similar like birthday is a good example of a song that is either paul on jazz bass or george on bass six and a lot of people don't i don't know what you guys think about that but like it's kind of up for grabs because they're so similar sounding what do you think about glass onion Who do you jazz bass Oh, well, isn't that Sam. proven to be jazz bass 100 percent. absolutely is. i thought that and, and the tone is is very crunchy like gently weeps I just want to say this was Paul's album. So, I mean, I think he just played on a lot of stuff. And if you, whatever we're listening to, I think the majority of it is Paul. Oh, absolutely. I think I'll, I'll make my final case for Paul on the bass. Uh, and I've actually put this in bullet points here. Uh, number one, it is a very tight performance. I think I also two weeks ago would have said John because I thought it was sloppy. 
having heard uh, the now you cannot hear this video or whatever uh, i went back and listened to the isolations it's tight fits the the drum rhythm um requires some skill on the bass which john doesn't really have so i don't think it really is sloppy as i said um the clip of paul talking while demonstrating the bass line he's playing the bass while he's talking and that's the take the same session as the finished take um the bass tone is identical to your blues glass onion piggies other paul bass lines those are not john um unless john's on a fender bass which he's not uh also paul does play bass on every live performance i think that's a pretty big pretty big indication you know he plays guitar on paperback writer as we said on sergeant pepper um he could play guitar if he wanted to and he plays bass every time um also i think you know we hate to rag on john lennon but if you watch in the get back uh footage like he can't do a simple quarter note bass line or half note bass line for long and winding road paul had to overdub it um if same he, goes for let it be like the final john, version of long and winding road has a wrong note in it right mm-hmm. i think so yeah so yeah john for all of his skill as a musician didn't quite have the dexterity and muscle memory on bass to pull off what's on the track. Mm. So that's my case for John on the bass. Suck it, Sam. Bravo. (laughs) Bravo. Well, comment below, everybody. Comment below, everybody. Let us know what you all think on what it was. Charles Manson played all the instruments. (laughs) No, that was the Beach Boys. uh... Oh, okay. Dennis Wilson. Yeah. Any other last (laughs) final closing thoughts? I don't like the song very much. <laughs> yeah, me neither, actually. It's, really? that's, uh, I like the song up until the end. When they get crazy, to, I don't yeah. like it anymore. It's just hard to listen to. I, it's, uh, I, well, it feels I like, think it's like early punk. Yeah, I like it. It feels what? like Paul's attempt to write a hard rock and roll song, something that would have taken John Lennon 10 seconds. Like yeah. Paul's just too conservative to do what John did naturally. <laughs> Fits perfectly with White Album. Horrible Paul's album. Granny music, get up, Paul. <laughs> Get yeah, get out. Out. Yeah, get out. Carousel, Helter Skelter. Some people yeah. think it's some crazy political well, message. Not but carousel, it's a ride. It's a, it's a slide. slide, right? Yeah, it's a, it's slide. a spiral slide. Oh, uh, okay, okay. It shoots because yeah. it was just like if you ask uh, like a British kid, they still have those. They're they're called Helter Skelters. Wait, How often do you talk to British about, kids? I'll, I'll show a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you I say about picture me you kids? showing us Nothing. right now, Ryan? Dude just incriminated himself. It's this thing. Oh. See? That looks like when I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. Or I stop and I turn and I go for a ride (laughs) until I get to the bottom. Apparently, um, the the intro riff is descending like a helter skelter slide. We could ask Paul about it, but he might not respond. But it's a pretty well established thing. It's weird they never came over to the U.S. (laughs) Hey, Charles, (laughs) man. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I will say guys is that my base six cover is one of my more successful ones and I was really hoping that we'd all agree that it was the base six however my guitar cover is still a casino so I still am right about yeah. the guitar cover at well least. take your base six cover down <laughs> yeah, make sure you all are going thumbs down that cover I mean I think you just have a way to get twice the views just do a jazz bass cover and people have to watch both now delete your there channel you <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whatever you want, Tom. I'll do anything for you. All right, guys. Let's close it out. Have a great night, everybody. Uh, Catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like and uh, tell us what you guys think. Yell at us. Start Whatever. some arguments. Let's go. Beetle, deedle, deedle, dee. <laughs> <laughs>